This time, we are talking about the movie Food Fight. And how it pertains to process. The importance of creating an environment where people can tell you the truth. And learning that if you do something just for money, you're going to fail every time. Hey folks, today we'll be talking about the $65 million Charlie Sheen animated film that no one has ever heard of. And boy, is it is it a thing. <laughs> it, it exists in the world. Uh, I'm Derek Haru. This is Doozy Van Dusen. And uh, today we're talking about the movie Food Fight. This movie is an animated film, um, ostensibly aimed at children, theoretically. <laughs> and- <laughs> we, we will argue about that, sir. <laughs> <laughs> that basically has a long, long history of many mistakes and l- very long development time of this animated movie. So why don't why don't you kind of set the scene for us? Yeah, totally. So um, the year is two thousand and six. I'm going to take us way back to two thousand and six, uh, and I mean animated films like the you know DreamWorks is making a mint. Pixar is you know has basically changed animation forever. But anyway, there was a lot of money going around for animated features. And so this company was like, hey, we'll do kind of a Roger Rabbit style film. They literally were trying to figure out a way to make a movie where like different food product, things like Swiffer and and Gillette and stuff were all in this world, which it sounds dumb now. But at the time (laughs) it was like, I guess that's fine. I mean, it's just cons- it's just consumerism. Yeah. It's basically in, Roger Rabbit, I guess. Instead of all these loved, what what is Roger Rabbit? Warner Brothers or what are so instead? But instead of all these loved, you know, loved cartoon brands, y'all all, all mixed in together, we'll have a bunch of loved food, uh, grocery store type brands. Yeah, and um, I didn't know that. I'll admit, I have not watched the whole thing, but I have. Uh, I'm about t- twenty minutes into it at two x speed, so that tells you about how how long I was able to last before I stopped. <laughs> um, <laughs> I was very, I didn't know that when I, I kind of first said, well, let me just get a fresh take of this before I read anything about it. And, you know, I see somebody who looks like Mr. Clean walk by and get mud spilled all over him. And I'm like, that's an odd joke to have in here. Like, that must be a copyright infringement. Oh, no, that's the point of the movie. <laughs> yeah, 100%. And and you, you mentioned uh, a frog gets hit with a manhole cover. And sprays Mr. Clean, who's wa- just walking through the scene like he belongs there, with a brown liquid. But that comes after the frog appears from nowhere and farts. That's true. That's a green, the, a green noxious gas. At the 15 <laughs> second mark of this film, we'll call it, a frog <laughs> farts. <laughs> Film. Like, and there's a cloud yeah. in everything. Well, my my favorite moment, you know, there's more history here, but I must share the the in the first 20 minutes, um, it was probably three or four minutes in, um, the main character, who is a dog detective. Mm-hmm. Um, and we know that says, because his name is Dog Detective. <laughs> <laughs> he, he pops a raisin in his mouth and says something about the raisin. And I think that, you know, the raisins were a, a tie-in. And my first thought is, Dogs are not supposed to have raisins. It is, <laughs> it is terrible for dogs to eat grapes and raisins. That is a, that is a thing that you are supposed to keep away from. Them. Oh my god, that's and awesome! <laughs> multiple multiple times throughout this movie, he's popping raisins, and they and is he's not just and they say what it is because it's the it's the plug that they you know that where they got their money from is the, this plug to talk about this brand of raisins. Um, and I'm like, what are we ah? Like my first first instinct was we're teaching our kids to feed dogs to raisins yeah. or raisins to dogs. <laughs> <laughs> and the, and and you mentioned it's it there's the California raisins are in this movie, but they're a horrible like <laughs> I don't know shadow version of yes, themselves I, and they're deaf uh, and the and the voice they're still singing uh, I heard it through the grapevine, but it's mm-hmm. a cover. It's not even the Buddy Miles version. It's really like upsetting <laughs> to see if you remember that from your childhood. Oh yes. Okay. So I'm I'm going to back up a little bit because we could spend the whole time just talking. I'm going to have the, the heavily the content of this edit. movie. <laughs> um, but uh, from what I was reading, way back in 2002 is where um, this actually began. So like this was like you said, Toy Story had been a success, and um, there are other movies like this. So way back then is when they were starting saying, "Yeah, we're gonna do an animated movie with all of this um, uh, product placement in it, and they're actually gonna be 
like it's not just product placement, but they're part of the story and they all come to life at night and fight the bad guys of generic brand X or whatever. <laughs> yeah. And like, and that's the thing is that it's not, it's weird how they address the characters. Like there's a point where, where the dog detective, his girlfriend, who's played by Hillary Duff, by the way, and there's only a 40 year difference between the actors playing those parts <laughs> appears to just be like when they modeled her character, dog detective looks like a dog looks like goofy the dog wearing like an indiana jones costume this yeah. this cat whose name is literally something to the effect of miss sunshine it, it just looks like cameron diaz wearing cat ears yes I, that was also i'm like wait i thought they were all supposed to be animals she's a human wait but she has cat ears but wait they put a really bad texture of whiskers on her that just looks like she got some some dirt on her face like, <laughs> what is, and then and, oh my goodness yeah but and then the, there's the raisins and i'm like i have no idea what there's some world building going on that i don't understand <laughs> sort of that's my problem is that she goes then she goes oh i can't wait for us to have dinner later i'll have chef boy rd make us up a big pot of whatever and i'm like wait is your na- is your neighbor chef boy rd like like when someone's i kind of expected a world where the like the like mr clean or chef boy rd are like royalty in this world and yeah like they're like they're figures of note um, but they're yeah. just treated like like we're supposed to know who Dog Detective and his horrifying to look upon ferret buddy. <laughs> it's so it's so hard not to just talk about the movie. Yes, and we're gonna have to talk about Christopher Lloyd's character later. Oh, it's, um, <laughs> that makes me sad. <laughs> so there, the, the the person who is really driving on this was a producer that had some successful movies under his belt, right? Yeah, movies I've seen. This the gentleman who who made this is a uh, is Lawrence uh, Kazanoff. Did you do any research on his filmography? I think I saw True Lies in there, um, the Mortal Kombat series, which yes, well, Mortal Kombat the 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 movies were not a. Um, a critical success, <laughs> but you know, people were interested in them. I, I will cop to this. People like to disavow things they did when they were young and dumb. I 100% saw the first Mortal Kombat movie in the theater oh, no less yeah. than five times. <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, but he made, he's also responsible for all of the Lego movies that are not Lego movie. Basically, like whenever you see like, like, a Lego movie that's just on Netflix. That's him apparently. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So the, the interesting thing here though, like, okay, so he's had some successful stuff. Like how did this abomination get out the door? And it's easy to just point to like, well, the product placement influencing stuff. I, you know, normally it'd be very easy for me to say, okay, well, the people who are, who are giving the money are the ones that are calling the shots and that's why, and there's so many hands in this. That's why it ended up that way. But I don't think that's the case in in this case. No, um, I mean I'm I, I'm sure some of it's there, but <laughs> yeah, absolutely. You're always going to have studio notes, but I don't. I really don't think that that was the case here. Partly, and the first part is it's a hundred percent a money play. They basically mm-hmm. figured he was trying to figure out a way to create the uh, the the magnum opus of product placement, where not only do does he have to do no character development because these brands just lend their identity, but he's also going to be getting a huge chunk of money from every one of these brands to be prominently featured in the movie. What happens is there's a story that the original hard drives for the film, after they had been working on it for some time, were just straight up stolen. I was reading the, one of the articles about this, and it's going along. It's talking about how um, you know that producer, Kasanoff, um, it decided to direct and I think to write it or something like that, which he, or to, yeah, to direct it. And he'd never done an animated film before. Um, didn't know any of the process and, and never even directed a film before. Right. So I think, I think him kind of being the driving force on it when this necessarily isn't his bread and butter is a huge part of the quality issue. But then it just slides into sentence that's like, oh, and all of their hard drives were stolen, so they had to start over <laughs> after two years of work. Like, what? Stolen? Do we know who? Like, there's so much going on there. What? what who? First, yeah, who would steal this of all things? <laughs> like, what? <laughs> so the the so the hard drives are stolen, and this and this kind of thing isn't without precedence. There's a story, and we can't go into it here. But if you want a cool story, look up Toy Story Two hard drive deleted and oh okay i've got another rabbit hole to follow later oh are you not aware of this i don't think so oh i'm so excited for you to learn 
I'm so <laughs> excited for you to learn about this. It's a really cool story. Um, okay. Yeah, but the story of like basically Toy Story 2 almost didn't happen for exactly okay. the reasons we just stated. Um, okay. Uh, but anyway, so these hard drives were reportedly stolen. And here's, I, I actually kind of, I, I kind of buy it. I could see that like sometimes, especially 2002, anything that's a computer gets stolen all the time. And this guy didn't sound like he was, you know, he had a secure facility. He was probably editing this thing in a, in a strip mall somewhere. Production just stops because there's nothing to be done. So much money's been spent. They're like swimming in debt. And apparently we don't hear about this guy again until almost 2006. And that's when he manages to get together some money and he starts trying to produce this thing and he's still selling it. Like it's going to be like a Pixar level. It's going to change the face of animation. Here's my favorite quote for us. This is Casablanca. (laughs) Oh, this guy, listen, he was a true believer and that may have been part of the problem. Um, when you watch this film, it is done with a degree of incompetence. I want to put something out there that there's a, a TV show that I was too old for, but my sister watched called Reboot, which is a 3D animated show oh, on Saturday morning. I mornings. watched that, yeah. Yeah, I, I, from what I saw, it's a cool show. Um, and they had early 3D animation for a whole half think, hour show. I think it was the first, the first one. Yeah. yeah. And the animation in this feature film done literally 14 years after yes. reboot is orders of magnitude worse <laughs> like this is this is the animation in this film if you can't watch it because uh, like it's it doesn't exist in a physical form you basically have to like find copies of it on youtube the an- you'll see for yourself it's like a cut scene from from conquer's bad fur day from the n64 that was I, my mind went straight there because of that squirrel i'm like <laughs> i think they ripped the model off from conquer's bad fur day <laughs> and the dog the dog i think um isn't there some i feel like there's some detective or police dog or something out there that looks just like this guy that they ripped him he's off a, from he's a bit mcgruffy um, mcgruff that's the one i'm looking for yeah he's a bit mcgruffy um <laughs> And so one of the reasons for this bad animation, um, which, yeah, when, when I saw 2002, I went, oh, maybe that's why the animation's so bad. And I was like, oh, wait, no, they scrapped everything they were working with back then and started <laughs> over after the hard drive. Um, is, you know, they didn't have any process. There was one of the uh, investors said that they were in there. Uh, I don't know if they were an investor. They were, they were involved in it somehow, but not, you know, directly with the creation of it. He said, well, this was the, my first time, you know, doing something like this with a movie and i didn't realize that they had no review structure in place at all that you know as this person went on to help with other animations um in the future they're like there's a very strict review structure where um somebody brings the scene and you know there's a there's a schedule and different people review at different times and come back and um this was apparently the director just kind of you know walking by computers saying oh that's not good it needs to be 30 percent better yes you know oh my gosh okay 30 percent better what does that even mean i saw that and it and it blew my mind i was like oh my god the person this person is a literal simpsons joke (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> uh, absolutely so that i, I want to dive in here because our our you know small business owner listeners are might be saying okay this is a fun um this is fun just ragging on this movie but where's the application and and <laughs> we'll get we'll get back to ragging on the movie that's going to happen plenty but um i that that point about process really stood out to me it was like what is your process and how can things you know things can really go off the rails without and the the fewer people you are working on a thing um it, it, the easier it is to not have a process because you just kind of call the shots, right? But if you've got a few employees or if you've got partners that you work with, um, setting up a repeatable process saves you so much headache and time and just really sets the stage where you're not churning um, and you know having people redo work or you having to redo work um, or having you know missed expectations, having that sort of regular, process in your business whether it's a marketing process whether you know maybe it is reviewing content that's going out um but it it could be as simple as a daily routine having that sort of process can really help stabilize things and you know based on these stories things were not stable uh at, (laughs) at this uh at this production and uh yeah, it just creates all sorts of chaos. Yeah, no emergency breaks were put in place here. This is a kind of like the this and this is super easy to do 
if you're a small business owner, if you're an entrepreneur, or even if you're just like working on little side projects for yourself, um, if you have a vision, you can get real passionate about that. And you often won't want to ask other people to look at it because in your mind, you're like, they're just going to say something they want changed on it and they're wrong and I'm right. So I'm not going to bother and I'm just going to push this to launch. And that's how things, you know, that that's how like terrible launches go. That's why, you know, mm-hmm. Steve, like they even said, like Steve Jobs was brilliant, but Steve Jobs had to have a board in place to basically tell him no occasionally, because if he did exactly what he wanted yeah. all of the time, you know, the, the, the first iPhone would have cost $15,000. <laughs> there's a reason he was kicked out of Apple in the first place. Sure. <laughs> and you know, there, there's, there's probably some not great reasons and there's probably, uh, some that just had to do with money. Um, but, you know, he was he was a bit of an agent of chaos and and did need people to you know rein him in a little bit to to actually be able to ship things. I right? love thinking of, of uh, Steve Jobs as like the Joker for Silicon Valley. <laughs> <laughs> I've been guilty of this many times, where I'm like, there are times I don't want to show something I'm working on before launch because I'm like, people are just going to get their stink on it and they don't understand what I'm going for and they're going to mess it up. Well, that's for sure very rarely true like it's it's statistically <laughs> insignificant how few times you're gonna not need at least three sets of honest eyes on whatever you're working on yeah and that that doesn't mean don't have a vision that that just means who who are you surrounding yourself with right who are your partners who are you know is it your family is it um your employees is it a, a you know co-owner that feels comfortable telling you no that feels you know that you can get honest feedback from but that doesn't come from a negative place like maybe if you just toss it out into public and say hey everyone tell me about this right um so like the story that goes along with this is that this film that was um you know ostensibly and initially said that it would be for kids is full (laughs) of sexual innuendos and throughout the entire movie it's, it is such an odd thing yeah for for um, those of you who can't see me and good for you um <laughs> the i've i've lived a life not entirely sheltered from the world and i found this movie to be gross like the amount of you're like like for an adult movie this it has it has clumsy it's just entirely clumsy cringeworthy sexual innuendos followed mm-hmm. by like they they keep doing this thing where like action will happen and then they hold on characters just standing still for like a three count like i couldn't <laughs> tell if that was a tactic they were using to pad out the movie to a full 90 minutes but yeah. like uh, like here's and because of the animation it is it's just like everything's rock steady it's not like it's <laughs> <laughs> right it just freezes yeah everything's uh, constantly shaking like all the characters are undulating and i want to get back to the worst offender in this film and that is the character that christopher lloyd was clearly tricked into playing <laughs> but i'm gonna we're gonna we're gonna tease that one more time because i agree i just want to finish a thought about we we're talking about you know putting people around you that can say no and there's a quote so, since we were talking about the innuendos that made it into this movie um one of the animators uh she said i thought they're just having fun writing this it won't make it into the finished film <laughs> um, <laughs> right because uh, i'm sure with all sorts of films somebody you know especially in the writing phase they're like oh this would be funny whatever it's not a thing and you know all, a lot of that stuff gets honed and cut as it goes along but there was nobody to tell them no or, or to tell this director no so i just wanted to reinforce that like Get people that you trust that you can get advice about how to run your business, about uh, is the thing that you're doing um, headed in the right direction. You know, find those people that you can trust. It's not just throwing it out to everybody saying, uh, get all of this, you know, feedback and they're just going to be super negative about it. But somebody that you can really trust, someone that you've seen make it happen that can get in there and someone that's not afraid to just say, yes, mm -hmm, that sounds great. So I just wanted to reemphasize that, 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 Based on the animators that were working on this, if they created an environment where nobody felt like they could say no, and and you should ask yourselves that too, like, do, can my employees come to me and say ah, this doesn't feel right, or 
are they are they just have I created an environment where they don't feel comfortable expressing their concerns? That can that can lead to so many issues so quickly. Okay, Christopher Lloyd. Oh my gosh. <laughs> what? Okay. So I could not figure out what I was looking at when Christopher <laughs> Lloyd's character shows up in this movie. <laughs> I don't think I've seen, I mean, this movie is full of dead eyes, but like his eyes that are pointing off at different directions, but they are never moving. I don't know that I ever saw them blink. The The number of technical crimes, this is, I went to uh, computer school in the late 90s and I graduated in the year 2000. I was in a class where someone submitted a final project that got a C that was better animated than this movie (laughs) none of the characters eyes fix on any one point they just point in like they'll have a conversation with each other and their eyes are looking every direction except at the character they're in front of the entire thing is just full of farting frogs cringeworthy innuendos (laughs) embarrassing stereotypes of every kind and there's straight up nazis in this movie and then Uh, i haven't got that far yet and somehow that all take (laughs) still takes a backseat to what who is this christopher lloyd character in the movie is he the professor that invented brand x he like undulates in and out of camera it's like they They were halfway through animating him and they didn't set the bones in his motion structure correctly. (laughs) Oh man. Yeah. That is what it feels like. If, uh, if you don't want to, you know, hurt yourself too much, you can skip to about 10, 10 and a half minutes in and you'll find it pretty, pretty quickly what we're talking about. (laughs) Yeah. So the movie is absolutely terrible. It finally got a backer. Uh, it was released in the UK and supposedly a couple of American like independent theaters, but uh, it grossed thirteen thousand dollars. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the movie cost sixty five million dollars to make, and it grossed thirteen grand. That's incredible. That's incredible. And I think it came out yeah in twenty twelve, right? So from t- ten ten years in development, this movie okay. this movie should not be as long as it is. It's hard to watch. Um, <laughs> neither of us watched the whole thing. I recommend go find it on the internet. It's easy to find on YouTube. Watch fifteen minutes of it. You got it. Maybe five, five at the max, actually. (laughs) Yeah. So I want to recap. Well, I want to hit some other takeaways. There's there's one other main one that um, that I wanted to think about, which is who who's deciding what work you're doing throughout the day, right? So like this this movie is a case of we've got these um, investors and money coming from these brands, and it's and you know as I've read all the history about it, it's like who's calling the shots here? Are they calling the shots? Um, is it, uh, this director Kasanoff that's normally producer that's calling the shots, which in this case seems to be it. Um, is it your customers? Are you making something for them or are you allowing them to dictate even too much of what it is that you're doing? Like thinking about who is dictating what you are working on, I think is, is really important. Like making sure that you, you have a direction that you have a choice that not everything that you're working on is, is the, um, the urgent thing that um, a customer necessarily comes to you again, process is part, part of that is setting a process to, um, to make sure that you can kind of handle a flow of things like that and not be overwhelmed by it. Um, but it's, it's easy to let whatever that next hot thing is be the thing that has our attention. Um, but getting your work organized, I think is, is definitely worth it. And you can be, you can be much more productive that way when the work is organized and just looking at the process, this movie went through, um, had me asking that whole, the whole time is the animators didn't know what they were going to be working on next. I don't know that the director himself <laughs> was doing anything beyond reacting to the things that were, was being created, um, rather than kind of setting a direction and choosing, choosing your work and laying your, um, your path out in front of you. Yeah. And the, and not knowing what's ahead, like, I mean, not to get too concrete about this, but this movie was in production hell for so long. It actually outlived hostess brands, which was one of the characters featured in the movie. (laughs) Oh yeah. So they didn't even get that money from them when the film finally released. Um, yeah, this is, this is a hundred percent just a case of someone driving forward with an idea they think is cool and not asking the questions of people that they, you know, you have to have people whose opinions you value and who will willingly look you in the face and say, this is terrible. You should not do it (laughs) because occasionally you're going to have a really exciting idea that hasn't been fleshed out or could get you in a lot of trouble. 
or um, <laughs> could, because people have done that. People have uh, in uh, people have started businesses with uh, a completely clear intention, and unbeknownst to them, they you know violate some some blue law or it creates a secondary problem they're not aware of. It's like a lot of the social media um, platforms that were being utilized to spy on like Chinese dissidents and things like that. Like you have to have an outer sphere that's willing to hurt your feelings and help guide you to where the Mm -hmm. thing you're trying to produce is actually a value to the world and elevates the world and makes somebody's life better even 1%. Well, that's about all I can talk about this movie for. Yeah, uh, I'm like, it's exhausting. <laughs> this seems like a movie that should be fun it's, to make fun of. And it's actually yeah. you're just like, it's just terrible from it's, the beginning. It's so bad. It's so bad. Like, I have so many things that I could say, but but it's just I want to be done with okay, it. But rapid, <laughs> rapid fire. Three things from the movie that spring to mind. I mean, I can't get Christopher, Christopher Lloyd out of my head and picturing him in a sound booth. I, I was thinking, what? Um, I want to hear what his reaction is to this movie when it finally came out. That's yeah. that was like the number one thing. Um, seeing the dog in the uh, the detective in the white suit, like okay, this director really loved Casablanca. And then you know there was one scene, there was one pan of the city that I thought, wow, that has some nice geometry, and that was the only good thought I had while watching this for twenty minutes. <laughs> Well, this has been uh, Worst Business Ideas in History. I'm Derek Haru. This is Deucey Van Deucey. And we'll talk to you guys next time. (laughs) 